So in today's video, I'm gonna give you some training tools and tips that you can do while at home in case you can't get to the range that day. So some days when you're trying to get better in the sport of archery, you just can't make it to the range that day. And I'm gonna give you some tools and some methods of training that you can do while at home to stay fresh for the sport of archery. For those of you that are new here, my name is Jay Kaminsky. I'm a two-time Olympic silver medalist. I trained professionally for a very long time and learned over the years a lot of tips and uh, training tools and training aids to use when I just couldn't go outside that day. Or potentially I was on the road competing and really needed to stay fresh when there wasn't a range available for me to shoot on. I'm working to make this uh, channel a really great resource for all types of archery, from form to tuning, exercises, equipment videos, uh, lots of different stuff to help make you a better archer. So if you're interested in learning more about archery, hit the subscription button and the notification bell. That way you're notified every time a new video is uploaded. I'm pumping out a lot of content lately and trying to help make you a better archer. You're watching the Jay Kaminsky YouTube channel. Real quick, I wanted to cover, there are a lot of new apparel designs that are uh, available out there. There's a little ticker that's essentially on the bottom of every window, uh, just below the video, so that way you can see a bunch of the new designs without clicking on it. I'll put links in the description below, plus I'll put a card at the top and where you can check out the new apparel. There are some really amazing shirts that James helped me design, and I can't thank him enough, and really helping me hone the focus of what it means to be an archer in my mind. Okay, so while you're stuck at home because of weather or whatever may be happening, maybe you just can't make it to the range that day, maybe mom wouldn't take you or dad wouldn't take you or your car broke down or something like that, there are some really important things that you can do on your own while not even shooting any arrows and stay very fresh. So as you can see, I've got a mirror over here and this is just a regular standard full length body mirror. They're really cheap. You can get them for five to ten dollars at most department stores. I use this as a tool all the time. Um, because you can see your entire body quite easily without really struggling and you can move it around the house if you need to hang it on your wall hang it on the back of your door whatever um, and really just use this to your advantage so how you use a mirror simple similar to this is essentially you just basically pull back and watch yourself in the mirror now you can just pull back and hold off. A lot of these types of training aids and training tools that I'm going to give you, you need to make sure you're using the proper form and technique. Now, a lot of you out there that are watching this have watched my uh, form series, and so you may have made quite a few form changes. So using a mirror and a stretch band and all these other things that I'm going to be showing you is really gonna be beneficial because I can watch myself doing the form that I'm doing, visually check to make sure I'm doing it okay, because not always does my feeling match what I'm actually doing. So this is a really good way to self-coach when you need to do it on your own. So simply pulling back and watching myself in the mirror, and I can always rotate and see what I'm doing, see if I'm leaning back by facing myself in the mirror and just continually checking things. I can check my alignment, um, a lot of different things that I can do in front of this mirror. So some of the things that I am going to be talking to you about are available on Amazon. So I'll put some links in the description below to like a stretch band, things like that. And a disclaimer, those are Amazon affiliate links. So anytime you click on those links and you're either doing your normal Amazon shopping or actually buying the items that I'm putting down there, I get a percentage of that and you're helping this channel out and allowing me to produce more free content for everybody. So thanks for those that click on those links. So you definitely need a mirror. You can use your bathroom mirror if you have enough room in your bathroom or somewhere else in your house. You can pick up these cheap mirrors. A stretch band is super important. This is just a homemade jobby, uh, but basically it doesn't need to be heavy. This is a super light stretch band. It is not designed for me to build my strength. All that this is doing is giving me some structure. So it's giving me the ability to pull something back and have a little bit of tension to just kind of mimic what a bow feels like. It doesn't need to be 40 pounds or 30 pounds or whatever your bow is. All that this is, is just a nice little bit of added structure to help train you in a way that you don't with your bow. What's really important about training for this sport is to do deep training, to challenge yourself, to make it hard, to make it difficult. That way when you're doing things correctly with the correct form, the correct movements and everything, your brain is learning faster 
and making those connections stronger that are specific to this sport. So by adding the visual cue of seeing yourself in the mirror, you're making sure you're doing the form correctly, the structure correctly. In my anchor video, I talked about the worst, my pet peeve of people who use stretch bands is they don't actually anchor where they normally anchor with a regular bow. They anchor back here like this uh, because they want to feel more alignment. But if you use the mirror, I can check where my anchor position is quite easily to make sure I'm ingraining exactly what I'm doing when I'm shooting. So a stretch band is really important to use in front of a mirror. Another thing that can be an advantage is if you have the ability or have a practice bow or maybe the bow you shot when you were a kid. This is my daughter's bow, so it's a little small. I have another longer one that's wood as well. That's my son's, but um, they're very light. The draw weight's not heavy. This can also be a tool for you to use in the mirror um, because again, it's even more structure. It does give you some resistance, but now you have the string to use as a reference on your face. You have a grip to put your hand into, things like that, that again, just give you an extra rigid structure to use in front of the mirror. Another thing that you can do in your house to increase your training load while you're not even shooting arrows is to do something called SPT. Now this is something that Coach Lee designed and uh, it's sick and awful. Uh, it's called SPT, which is, he calls it specific physical training, but everyone and every archer that has ever done it calls it severe physical torture because it's awful. It's not fun, not enjoyable, but it's super effective. So there's three types of SPT. There is holding, there is power, and there is flexibility. So each one is different and each one can be done at different times and there is different ways to do it. So depending on what you're looking for, you can use those three. Now I always suggest doing power and holding in front of a mirror so you can visually check and make sure your form's not breaking down. Holding is very simple. All you do is you pull back, you get to full draw. Once you have transferred or once you have achieved holding, you then hold for a period of time. So the goal is you want to hold with correct form for a minimum of 15 seconds, a maximum of 30, and then you rest double your hold. And you want to continually do that on and off. So if I hold for 15 seconds, I rest for 30, then I hold for 15 seconds, then I rest for 30, hold for 15, rest for 30, and so on for an entire hour. If you can do the whole hour, you will gain a whole lot of strength. And it is said to be equivalent to two to 300 arrows of actual shooting, just based on the workload that you're doing. You'll gain a whole lot of strength and the ability to go up in bow weight effectively and very quick if that's what you are trying to do. Or you're just going to get strong and your bow is not gonna feel very heavy and your scores can go up because your bow is easier to shoot. So holding again is just, I come to full draw, I transfer, now it's hold. One, two, all the way to 15 seconds. So I will continue to hold and I make sure that my form is okay. I can rotate and look at myself. I could check my angles and my alignments and make sure that everything is good. My anchor is not sliding forward. I'm not losing my finger tension. I'm not hiking my shoulder up. I'm ultimately just checking and then I let down. <sighs> I rest, take a moment, and then I do it again. I would use a finger tab because an hour, a half hour of this really hurts. But another thing that you can do is you can take your stretch band and you can make it harder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on the shelf and wrap it like this so it goes away from my rest and around my plunger like that. And I'll put it in between my fingers like I'm shooting an arrow, just like this. And okay, it's about double what I've pulled. So now I'm going to pull back, transfer, time starts. So I added, this stretch band may only be five to eight pounds. It's not very heavy. But when you add it on your bow, now your bow becomes five to eight pounds heavier. So it's a lot more of a challenge. So you can use your stretch band for an added tool for holding SBT. This is ultimately gonna gain you a lot of shooting strength to be able to maintain um, you know, your, your form throughout the day. It is not easy to do. And again, we call it severe physical torture for a reason. The next style of SPT is called power. So it's a lot different. It's, it's power SPT, but it also can be called pumping SPT. Pumping SPT, you have to hit a minimum of seven reps to 10 reps. You want to get to seven, but if you can do 10, and then you rest two minutes after your set. So what we would do is we would 
pull our bows back in a group and coach Lee would give us a cue. And what we, what we would do is we would come to full draw, we would transfer, we would hold for two seconds, and then he would say down, pull. So we would go down to set up position and then go back to full draw again. So pumping SPT is full draw, transfer, hold for two seconds, down, pull, down, pull, down, pull, down, pull, down, pull, check myself in the mirror, down, pull. And as you can see, it's not easy. It's gonna be hard, especially with your regular weight bow. So you do that for seven times, seven pulls. That's two, or that's one, that's two, three, four. You want to do it for seven times to 10 times. Rest for two minutes, do it again. Try to do that for an hour straight. You'll gain a whole lot of strength. Again, the goal is you wanna hold with the correct form for about two seconds, then come down to set up position, then come back to full draw, transfer, hold for two, come down to set up, transfer, hold for two, etc. So you have to make sure you're holding, you have to make sure you're using the correct structure, make sure your form's not breaking down, and ultimately you really want to try to get as many reps as possible. Now, while we were at the training center, if we didn't hit 15 seconds of holding, we didn't have seven reps in us to be able to do it, Coach Lee would make us put our bows down, run a lap around the field, do some push-ups, and pick our bow back up again. Now, once we failed a few times in a row, then we'd have to go to a light bow and still do it with proper form. It was intensive training, but we gained a whole lot from it. The last SPT is flexibility SPT. It's different. You do need to be able to shoot. You can do it at blank bail. That's just fine. This is more so for recurve, less so for bare bow. I suppose you could probably still do it for bare bow if you would like, um, but ultimately you guys aren't pulling through a clicker like I used to with a recurve. So essentially what happens is you pull the bow back with an arrow in it, your finger tab, finger sling, everything. Pull your bow back. And I suppose you could do this without a target. You just wouldn't be shooting the arrow afterwards, but you have to have good clicker control so you don't shoot an arrow through your drywall. So essentially what you do, you come to full draw and then you start expanding, expanding, expanding as you normally do your normal timing within that two to three seconds, the clicker clicks. But then I continue to expand for 10 more seconds. So flexible SBT is slightly different. Um, you may want to do it in front of a target if you don't have good clicker control because essentially you're putting an arrow on your bow and you're going to be pulling through your clicker and then continually pulling past the clicker. You're not actually going to be shooting your arrows um, during this exercise, but afterwards it's always good to shoot an extra couple arrows after you're done with this um, if you can. So flexibility SBT, super simple. You load an arrow on your bow, you put it on the clicker, you pull back, and you expand. Clicker clicks, you continue to expand for 10 more seconds past the clicker clicking. And then you let down after those 10 seconds, but you continually add and add that intensity to expand, expand, expand for 10 more seconds past your clicker clicking. Obviously this may not work for bare bow because you guys want to have a really consistent draw length. You don't want to change that at all. So this may not be beneficial to bare bow shooters. Flexibility SPT is supposed to be done on a recovery day. Um, because ultimately you do it about 10 times and then shoot 10 arrows afterwards. It really will show you how much more you can move and how much easier you can set that clicker off when you need to. Okay, the last thing that I'm going to recommend is a shot trainer. This is made by Astra Archery. So it's Astra Archery, it's a shot trainer. It is basically a newly renovated take on the Form Master, which used to be a great tool but it really kind of was punishing and it was a bit cumbersome to use because you had to take it on and off all the time, whereas this has a little bit more advanced design. It's a lot more comfortable. It's really, really effective at making sure you maintain back tension all the way through release and follow through. Um, I do offer these on my website and uh, you, can, you can check that out in the link in the description below. But essentially, I'll show you what it does in a, in, for briefly. I'm gonna do another video that will be specific to using this and how to use it properly, um, as well as using it with your Olympic recurve. I've just thrown it on a bare bow here just to show you, but essentially you're not connected while you're at full draw, you're holding it in your fingers, but when you let go, it puts all the tension onto your elbow. Or as you can see, it's totally connected to my elbow. So the way I can do it is I can let go of the string, uh, just like I'm shooting a bow, 
even without an arrow. Ideally, you want to do it with an arrow and a clicker if you're using a clicker and be aiming at a target because that adds a whole other level of complexity to it. But essentially, you come to full draw, you transfer, and then when you release, you make sure you're maintaining back tension. I'm not adding any pressure or anything extra, but essentially the shot trainer is an excellent tool that you can do while at home um, in addition to all of the other things that I've covered today. Thanks for watching, and thank you to my Patreon supporters. If you want to become a Patreon supporter or check out books, apparel, and some seminar info, head to jkaminski.com, and uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded. And I appreciate you watching. Thank you again.